Welcome to this tutorial brought to you by River City Graphics. Today I'm going to be discussing the different methods of tweening in Flash. So to get started we're going to open up Flash and here you can see I have a document and I've taken and imported an image in here which is the Photoshop icon and we're going to be tweening this today. And what I mean by tweening is basically moving an object around, an image around within Flash by using keyframes. So the way that we can do this depends on what version of Flash we're using. Now in Flash CS3 you're going to have two options I believe. One called uh, the motion tween and then one called the shape tween. Now in Flash CS4 and CS5 those um, the old motion tween became the classic tween and you have a new motion tween option. So it's a little bit confusing. If you're in CS4 and CS5 you're going to probably want to use the motion tween rather than the classic tween or the shape tween because it just gives you more options. If you're in Flash CS3 you're going to want to use the motion tween. So let me show you what each of those does. So I'm just going to take and create a motion tween. So I'm going to do that by taking the first frame where we have our Photoshop icon. I'm going to right click and I'm just going to, um, you can either copy the frame or you can just go out to 30 or so frames. And I'm just going to right click and go to uh, convert to keyframe. So basically it's going to take the first keyframe and put it all the way out to 30. And it's the same thing on all of that. So what you can do is right click in between here and I'm going to show uh, the classic tween first which is basically what the motion tween in CS3 is and what classic tween is in CS4 and CS5. So we're going to click that and now you can see that it's taken and it's added a little arrow right here. And this arrow basically um, denotes that you have a motion tween. So you can see that nothing's moving and that's basically between or because the first uh, point of the tween and the last point of the tween are in the same spot. So what we do is take the last one on the last frame and drag that out and so now it's in a different spot so you can see that it moves from spot A to spot B. Now this is all fine and good but the new motion tween in Flash CS4 and CS5 gives you a lot more options. So I'm just going to take and remove those frames, right click and remove them. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go out to, I don't know, something far like 50, 51, somewhere in there. And we're going to right click and go to convert to keyframes. And it remembered that we had a tween before. So I'm just going to remove that tween so that we can use the new type. And so you're just going to, again, click in the middle. And you're going to go to create motion tween. Now sometimes it'll create it on a new layer so we don't really need the bottom layer anymore. So now um, the motion tween is denoted by this blue box. So what we can do is we can take and just click anywhere that you want to make a keyframe for this motion tween. So I'm of course going to put it out at the very last point and I'm just going to take and drag my Photoshop icon. And now you can see that we instantly have this little pink, uh, pinkish line and you can see that there's a lot of dots on that and what those dots are are the frames. So at each dot we're moving along one frame and it's moving the position of that icon. So within here, if we wanted to change that up, all we have to do is take and put the cursor where we want it to change, and then we just drag the icon, and you can see that it automatically updates the motion tween. So now, now our object moves in that type of fashion. So there's definitely um, a lot more application that you can do with this. Um, just real quick, if you were to use the old method, if you were to use the classic tween, and you wanted to take and you say you had a whole bunch of these points, and say you were you were just going crazy and making a really cool um, different movement. If you wanted to take and just make this longer, like say, well that's a great movement but it just needs to last longer. So what you would do is you'd first cry because it's going to take forever and then you'd take and you'd redo it. Now in this one if you wanted to take and make it longer you just take and go to the edge of your motion tween until the cursor changes into the little left and right arrows and then you just take and drag it out and it spaces that out evenly. So you can see that it definitely saves a ton of time if you want to do that. Now again, um, if you were to use the old method and say that you wanted to move this, like say, oh that's a great movement but I want it to move down here. I want the thing to, or the icon to take and move up and over over here rather than up here. Again, you would probably cry and then you'd try and move it. So with this all you have to do is click on to the actual path, not on the object, and you just take and you can move it down here. So now you have it moving right where you want it. So you can take and just uh, move it however you want it and it updates automatically. So again with this you, can, uh, you have quite a few different options uh, with what you can actually do 
uh, to the path. Since it's a path, you can actually take and move the points around. So you can grab your sub-selection tool, which is this little white tool right here. You can grab the ends and you can take and drag those around or you can drag these uh, wherever you want, depending on how you want your path to go. And you can also take and use some of the pen tool options to actually make a curve with your points. So what I'm talking about is you can go to your pen tool, which probably looks like that, and you go down to this convert uh, anchor point tool, and then wherever you've created these keyframes along here, again, if you want another one, you just right click and go to insert keyframe, and then you just, um, you have different options, you just go to all, and you can see that it added another one. What you can do with each of these is you can take and drag out, and you can actually take and curve your object or your path. So then you can really get some creative uh, different paths of how you can actually move your objects. So now you can see that we have our Photoshop icon going crazy in a curve. Uh, if you were to try and make a curve with the classic tween or the old way in CS3, um, it would be quite a pain, but here you can see that it is very easy to take and move that how you want it. So along here, um, you can also do some cool things uh, by taking and going into the motion editor. So I'm just going to make this larger so that you guys can see it. And what you have in here is basically um, a another representation frame by frame of what your tweens look like. So you can see that you have each of your tweens here, your rotation, uh, all kinds of things. And you can also add uh, color effects such as you can change the alpha depending on if you want it to start at the beginning and you want it to be faded out and then fade in and all kinds of stuff like that. You can do all that right here or you can do it right here on the screen um, which it's probably easier to do there, but you can also take and right click and create keyframes on here and move them around and change the values. So this definitely gives you um, some extra added um, options when it comes to making your tweens. So I hope you guys learned something uh, with this tutorial. There's definitely a lot more option with the new motion tween uh, than you would get with just the classic tween. So I just uh, wanted to make sure that you guys knew about that because it can definitely save you a lot of time and frustration. So, I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and comment. I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for watching.